Morning, everybody. It's the Ionic Guy. You join me today from my Ionic 5, which I haven't shot in very often lately. But today we're talking about battery preconditioning for the Ionic 5, the Ionic 6, the Genesis GV60, the Electrified GV70, the Electrified G80, and the Kia EV6. So a lot has happened since my last video that I made in January of 2023. There's been two navigation updates for all these cars. There's also been major drivetrain updates that have either been installed at the dealership, or if you have a newer 2023 or 2024 Ionic 5, then you have them from the factory, so you don't have to go and get them. But lots of things have changed. The software does operate very differently compared to a year ago. So I figured it was high time to make a new video to make sure all this information is as relevant and up to date as possible. It's November here in New England. Temperatures are dropping. So if you plan on DC fast charging this winter, stay tuned. Hey everybody, it's the Ionic Guy. If this is your first time on the channel, I just want to give you a big welcome. My name is Corbin. I cover all things Hyundai, Kia, Genesis, EV related. So you might have already seen my previous video on this topic right here. Um, at this point, I would say it's irrelevant to watch that video anymore. So let's start with the basics. What is battery conditioning? Well, it's kind of right in the name there. Your battery pack likes to be conditioned to a certain temperature, just like humans do. So for optimal performance, the battery likes to be at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees Celsius. So we want to keep that battery in that range, especially when we're DC fast charging at high power chargers. And the further the battery temperature dwells from that 70 degree point, the longer it's going to take to charge your car. But because of that fact, the battery does have heating. So it is capable of pumping hot liquid through the battery pack to elevate the cell temperatures. Now, although there's not just a button where we can say, hey, precondition the battery. Some automakers do that. I wish Hyundai would do that, but they don't give us that option here. So Hyundai, please add that in the future. But we do have some ways of controlling it. Now, if you guys are big EV nerds like me and you want to know what the temperature of your battery pack is for DC fast charging, there's no way within the car to know what the battery temperature is. The only way you're going to be able to do that is with an OBD2 scanner as seen here. This is the one that I recommend for everybody. It's worked very well for me for the last nearly two years. This is from VPeak. I will have a link to it in the description below if you're interested in purchasing it. So all you got to do is take this little guy and under the driver section of the dashboard, you can just pop this into the OBD2 or onboard diagnostic port. Plug that in, and with a smartphone app such as Car Scanner, which is what I recommend to use and what I use exclusively, you can then connect to that little adapter and you can go and see all sorts of statistics about your car. It basically reads the car's computer and gives you all of that information. It's really cool. So from this screen here, this is my preferred view. You can see the state of charge. You can see battery minimum temperature, battery maximum temperature, coolant temperatures. Um, inverter temperature, motor temperatures, outdoor, indoor, all sorts of cool stuff here. But then if you swipe a few pages down from that one, you can see all sorts of battery module information. So you can see down to the module level, each module's temperature. So you can see it ranges from like 59 up to about 61. Just a lot of cool information. You don't really need to see it on a module level. It's cool to look at, but for general purposes, this screen gives you all the information you need, which is battery min. Now, when you are done checking battery temperatures, be sure to remove this from the OBD2 port because it could draw power from the battery because that port is always powered. And you don't want to wake up with a dead 12 volt. Battery min is the parameter that needs to be met to jump your charging speed up to the next block. So charging speed kind of goes up in like 30 kilowatt increments. So if you show up to a DC fast charger with a battery that's about 40 or 50 degrees, you might see 100, 120 kilowatts. Once you hit 60 degrees, you'll see about 150 to 175 kilowatts. And then when you eventually get to 70 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 degrees C, you will see full charging power if your battery is at a low enough state of charge. You will see upwards of 240 kilowatts at a 350 kilowatt DC fast charger. So if you're at 150 kilowatt DC fast charger, you might see about 180, 190 kilowatts. So even on those slower chargers, you can still get a very good charging rate. So before route planning was added to all these cars, 
it was a very convoluted way to get battery preconditioning to work. Now there's still some issues with it. I'm gonna go through them later in this video. It's actually fairly simple to use battery preconditioning now, but there are some rules that you need to follow. So right now I'm sitting at 65% state of charge. It's currently 54 degrees out. So there is about 16 degrees of difference between optimum battery temperature and current battery temperature. Now there's a couple rules with battery preconditioning that you need to know going into it. And that is that the battery has to be at a minimum of 20% state of charge for it to engage. And that is because battery preconditioning uses about five kilowatts of power. So if you were going to precondition the battery for an hour, that's about five kilowatt hours of total energy needed to warm the battery pack up. Depends on outdoor air temperature. In relatively mild temperatures like today, like in the 50s, the 40s, it takes about a half an hour to get the battery pack up to 70. Now, if you're on the highway driving at 70, 75, 80 miles per hour, that's a lot of extra wind carrying a lot of cold air underneath the car, which is going to slow the rate at which the battery will warm up. So there's all sorts of variables here. So 20% minimum state of charge. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do with your car is make sure that battery conditioning mode is engaged. So to do that, you can go to the EV screen, you can click on settings, click the cog down the lower right corner, and then right here on the left, you'll see battery conditioning mode. Click on that, make sure that box is checked. If that box is not checked, it will not turn on and it will not engage and you will be very surprised when you show up and your battery is cool. Another thing I recently heard is a bug with Blue Link. So let's say I go into the Blue Link app if you are using it. Kia, I don't have your app so I don't know exactly how it functions there, but I'm gonna show Hyundai owners right here. So from the home screen in the Blue Link app, if you view charge management and if you change your DC charge limit, from let's say I have it set to 80%, I change it to 50% now, hit apply. Okay, it says successfully saved. It's been processed successfully. You can see in the EV settings, it has changed from 80% to 50%. But if I go to the battery conditioning mode, battery conditioning mode gets turned off. I think this is another bug. So Hyundai, please fix this. This is gonna catch a lot of people off guard. Now me personally, I don't really go into the Blue Link app to change my charge management that often, but it does happen a couple times a year. If it's really cold out, I don't feel like going out and changing it. I will do it remotely. So because my car is at a relatively high state of charge, I can't really plan a long road trip to simulate battery conditioning coming on because I'd be able to go further than 30 miles away from my house before I would need to stop and charge. So we're gonna have to force a simulation here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Nav. So I have some favorites down here. These are my local Electrify America stations. So let's pick the closest one, which would be Walmart 1891 in Manchester, Connecticut and we will start guidance to there and I can show you what battery preconditioning looks like when it engages. So the route is engaged and if I come over here to the driver display, we should see a message pop up here in a couple seconds saying that battery conditioning mode is activated. So there's the message, battery conditioning activated for optimal DC charging. You'll see down here that my car displays a snowflake and that is because my car is an older 2022 Ionic 5. And my car did not come with battery preconditioning from the factory. So it was a software update at later in time. And for some reason we get a snowflake and newer cars that had battery conditioning from the factory had red heating coils. There was some discrepancy there, some 2022s. See a red heating coil, it's kind of all over the place. But either way, you're gonna see a snowflake or a heating coil indicating that the battery conditioning mode is active. So with this little slick new split screen mode that we got in the October navigation map update, we can now see our electricity use directly from this split screen. And you can see this rightmost icon is battery conditioning. So it's telling us right now that the battery conditioning is using five kilowatts of power, which is a significant amount of power, but it will reach 70 degrees relatively quickly because it is only 55 degrees out today. If this was running for a half an hour to get the battery pack, you would expect about seven or eight miles of range reduction, which isn't too bad. In my experience, DC fast charging in winter, you will take about 30, 35 minutes 
with charging at a DC fast charger if the battery is not conditioned. If you just roll up with a cold battery pack, expect at least 30 minutes to go from 10 to 80%. So that's pretty much how to use battery conditioning mode now. It's so much less convoluted than it was a year ago. Hyundai's did a good job of implementing route planning as well as battery conditioning into that route planning. Now there are some things you need to know not to do. And that is if you are going to just say, leave from one destination, stop at a DC fast charger. There's one way not to navigate to a DC fast charger if you want battery conditioning to actually activate. Do not search for a DC fast charger and navigate to it. Battery conditioning mode will not activate. And I will show you that right now. So let's say I tell the car I wanna to navigate to the Electrify America station in Manchester, Connecticut. Navigate to Electrify America in Manchester, Connecticut. Pick it from that list. So it's now planning the route. Let's see what happens. So it's been several minutes and as you can see, battery conditioning has not activated. I don't know if this is a bug or if this is by design, but Hyundai, please fix this. So I will show you if you do wanna to navigate to just a DC fast charger, this is the way to do it. So if you press the navigation button on the dashboard and go to nearby POIs, EV charging stations, these are gonna be all the closest EV charging stations. So let's pick this EA station in East Hartford, Connecticut. We'll route to it and we will see what happens. And boom, there you go. It is now conditioning the battery for DC fast charging. So I do find it strange that you can't just either ask the car to navigate to a DC fast charger or search for it manually. Now, unfortunately, the list of nearby points of interest chargers stops at about 30 miles. So if you do wanna put in a further DC fast charger as your sole destination, you're gonna zoom out. And let's say I wanna go up to Boston and charge somewhere around here. So I can drag the little crosshairs to roughly that location, search nearby points of interest, EV charging stations, and now it will pull up a list of all the DC fast chargers near Boston. And if I do pick it from this list, route to it, it will engage battery conditioning as I approach within 30 miles of that destination. So that's a little bit of a workaround that has not changed since the previous iteration of this system. So say you live in an apartment, you don't have level two charging at your house, and you wanna be able to quickly precondition the battery for DC fast charging at your local EA station or charge point or EV go, whatever. You can add little shortcuts down here for favorites. So if you click on one of the favorites, you can then select nearby points of interest, EV charging stations, and if you pick one of these and add it to the screen here, then you will be able to just quickly pick on one of these, start guidance, and then it will navigate you to that DC fast charger with battery conditioning engaged. So let's say I wanna take a trip down to Richmond, Virginia, visit my friend. So I'm gonna go into the navigation system. I'll look at previous destinations because I did search for that relatively recently. So Richmond will plan a route. So it's gonna come up and say the battery capacity may be insufficient to reach your destination. Would you like to stop at an EV charging station? So you say yes. It's now going to plan some charging stops for you. Compared to my previous video, this would not work. This did not happen. So you can see it's planned a few charging stops. You can see it's asking me to stop down in Southern Connecticut. And then it looks like uh, EA, yep, an Electrify America, another Electrify America. So it planned these stops. And what's nice is it tells you how long it's going to take to charge from that percentage to that percentage. Now, these are just rough estimates. It's probably not going to be dead on, but it is a pretty good estimate. And you'll notice the charging time is definitely longer than the advertised 10 to 80% in 18 minutes. And that's because I have my DC fast charging currently set to 90%. So it is gonna take a little bit longer and you are starting at a less optimal starting point. So it's not gonna have that super high speed charging curve at 23% as it would down at 10%. There's also another change to the car from the last time I made a video about this. So if you charge the car to 100% and then you say wanna climate control the interior so that when you 
eventually start your journey, you don't have to take energy from the battery to do that. Now, instead of having to unplug the car, condition the cabin, and then plug it back in to top it up, now you can just leave the car plugged in as it charges to 100%, activate the climate control, and it will condition the cabin. This was some weird limitation that the car previously had, but it has completely been eliminated. You can now condition the cabin while it's still plugged in and charging. So that's a big win. So anyway, guys, that's a walkthrough of battery conditioning, how to use it, its nuances, and generally, things are good right now. The car has improved a lot since the day I bought it back in January of 2022. So hopefully it can only get better from here on out. As we get access to Tesla superchargers, that's going to be a whole nother interesting thing to take a look at. Hopefully they will add all those Tesla chargers into the navigation system in the near future because right now you can't really find them. So there is a Tesla supercharger with a magic dock near me, but it doesn't exist in the navigation system. So I can't actually navigate to it and precondition the battery. So on a separate note, I want to let you guys know, I recently redesigned my website for my 3D printed accessories for the Ionic 5, Ionic 6, GV60. It's a little easier to navigate now. I've kind of sectioned things off by model of car. So go check that out. I really appreciate it. Every purchase really helps me build the channel just a little bit more. My magnetic eyewear holder keeps your sunglasses really conveniently located right on the magnetic pad of the Ionic 5 as well as the new Kona electric that's coming out in a few months. The cup holder enlargers allow you to use larger 32 or 40 ounce water bottles with the existing cup holders in the Ionic 5, the Ionic 6, and the GV60. And let's say you live in an apartment and you can't charge at home, then the little charge port indicator light cover will block those really bright LED lights. You won't get any unnecessary attention brought to your car while it's charging. Because I've really enjoyed designing products and 3D printing in general, I've designed another product. And as a coffee fan is a little cone paper filter holder for your countertop in your kitchen available in three different colors. So I'll have links to these on screen right now or in the description below. You can also go to my website, ionicguy.com. If you live outside the US, you can go to Etsy and search for the Ionic Guy. So as always, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, it really helps me out. Subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, everybody.